My name is Tobias Martin and I will make a presentation about when a product architecture is a system of modular systems. Let's go. In our last webinar, I explained that the modular system is a collection of building blocks that can be configured in different ways, adapting for different customer needs over time. The most obvious and traditionally known way to create modular systems is to group a number of products into platforms that share technical properties like technology and sizing and supply chain properties like factory footprints and supplier base. The system in this case is scoped as an end-to-end -end product. Functions that exist across platforms are typically not evaluated or shared. In this example, we could, for example, imagine a company maintaining different platforms for different sizes of winches or for different power sources or for different applications. This inevitably leads to sub-optimization where functions are customized and re-evaluated towards the specific platform rather than optimized from a holistic point of view. Often related to a project-driven development organization where there's always room for improvement of the wheel. In the worst case, the customizations are not even necessary from a performance perspective, and they may even decrease the customer value. In all cases, they become a barrier for supply chain and aftermarket efficiency, improvements that could benefit from greater commonality. Now, some leading companies have taken it to the next level by defining a wide scope product architecture. They have a system of modular systems that can be shared across multiple product platforms. The product architecture is a configurable system of modular systems, enabling massive benefits for scale and flexibility. One example of such a leading company is the Volkswagen Group, the world's largest auto manufacturer. Volkswagen has consistently pushed the boundaries of product platforms and architecture, marking the direction of the whole industry. I often use them as an example of all sorts of benefits connected to modular systems. In this presentation, I will use Volkswagen to explain the concept of high-level product architecture and shared modular systems. In the early 1990s, Volkswagen pioneered the use of shared platforms in the auto industry. Volkswagen had acquired Audi in the mid-1960s, Seat in 1986, and Skoda in 1991, and they were manufacturing more than 20 different car models. And by sharing the base platform between multiple models and brands, economies of scale could be reached for components such as drive lines, interiors, and chassis. Over time, this approach was criticized for limiting the ability to adapt the product to different brand images. Now, this standardization might hurt the status of premium brands, but it also increases the risk of not reaching low enough cost levels for value brands. The second generation of Volkswagen's platform concept came in the mid 2000s. There is a clear switch from standardization to modularization, enabling wider platforms and increased economies of scale. Now, all Audi production cars were being built from the same platform, a dream for the supply chain. They enabled huge increases in efficiency, fewer assembly lines and greater purchasing leverage. But one decade later, in the mid 2010s, the bomb dropped and it was called MQB. Now this is German and is roughly translated to modular transversal engine building system. Now Volkswagen was aiming to build cars of practically any size from the same product platform. The result was that in the end of 2020, today, the MQB platform encompasses more than 80% of the Volkswagen total production volume of passenger cars. Now, a modular system does not have to span the product end to end 
And I will use Volkswagen here as an example to explain what a product architecture is, what the modular system is and how modules relate to these concepts. But first, as already mentioned, I define a modular product architecture as a system of modular systems that are configured on all levels. Here I illustrate it in relation to an end-to-end -end product. And we can see here that the end-to-end -end product uses system A, system B and system B, C to build a product. Uh, and in this example, we can see that system C can be covered by one modular system crossing all the three product platforms that we see here. System B is shared across two of the three platforms and system A is specialized towards each specific platform. Both system A and system B are specific for platform three, and this opens up a possibility for further integration between these systems in that case. Now to date, Volkswagen has a number of modular building systems. They have MQB, as already mentioned, but they also have MLB for longitudinal engines and MMB for mid-engine cars. And for electric drive lines, we have the MEB and we have the PPE. So now it sounds like they have a lot of different platforms again, right? But in actuality, uh, these platforms mainly exist, these other platforms, other than MQB and MEB, because Volkswagen has many premium high performance cars in their portfolio, especially under the Porsche and Audi brands. But as mentioned earlier, the bulk of the volume cover is covered by MQB. What's especially interesting to note is that this platform and all the other platforms are instances of the same configurable product architecture. So what I mean is that the different platforms can be built by the same underlying configurable modular systems. To explain this concept, let's look at the MEB platform. And now the MEB is Volkswagen Group's first all-electric platform. It's built completely around the electric drivetrain and obviously one of the most important parts of any battery powered electric platform is the battery. And here comes the point. The battery is actually a modular system of its own. A modular system that can be shared with the other electric platforms, including for example the PPE for the premium high performance electric cars. Now, the important factors for configuring a battery are how much space you have at hand and how much energy you need to store. If the different platforms can share the same high voltage interface and the same battery footprint logic, there is no reason why this modular system could not be shared across the platforms. Now, this is a modular system that can be configured to deliver different levels of battery capacity, different charging performance, and towards different available footprints. Many of the modules inside the system can be standardized for an enormous volume consolidation. So this includes, for example, the cell module, the cell management controller, and the high voltage connector. And this creates huge benefit when setting up the new battery supply chain. And now Volkswagen has even hinted that they want to sell their electric platform to other car makers, further expanding on the consolidation of volumes and making the investments in development and supply chain even more profitable. To add some clarity to this, let me put some words from the VB electric platforms on the boxes in the earlier modular product architecture illustration. So we see here a chassis system, a drive system, and a battery system. And even though we see distinct platforms for, for cater for different product categories, different car types, we can imagine the module system shared across these platforms. So a platform now is a configuration of the underlying module systems. Module systems that could either be flexible for many platforms, like we see the battery system in the, this illustration, or specialized towards a specific platform for maximum performance or optimized cost. Finally, you see modularity on all levels and an extremely systematic approach that can be leveraged across the functions of the company. For example, R&D, production, product planning and sales. And the very same thinking can be applied in many other product segments in both industrial and consumer goods, like appliances, machinery, different types of equipment. 
For example, the home appliance industry. The tradition here is to see different types of appliances as different product platforms. Often multiple product platforms for one appliance type. Now, they would say that they would want one modular system or one product platform for washing machines and another system for dryers. While this makes perfect sense from a functional point of view, it lacks the perspectives of industrial design and production. Since the washers and dryers are typically used in combination and located together in our homes, you clearly want them to have a common design, both for aesthetics and for user interface. So from a modular system standpoint, it makes a lot more sense to see the front panel and user interface as a shared modular system that goes across product platforms, rather than as parts within different platforms that we have to align constantly as, they, as these platforms evolve independently. Now, if we see them as a shared modular system instead, we can introduce updates to both the styling and the user interface simultaneously across these two product lines. And this also matches the expectations for customers. They are looking for consistency in look and operation here. Another driving factor in this industry, just as in the car industry, is to have flexible line assembly. We want to produce many products on the same flexible lines while keeping these lines extremely efficient. An enabler for this is the harmonization of the approach to structural design, enabling the use of the same assembly order, the same assembly tools, etc. So let's say that we want to produce washers and dryers on the same assembly line. This would be a clear motivation to include them in the same product architecture, sharing as many of the underlying module systems and interfaces between these systems as possible. So using the same way of illustrating the product architecture while putting in the words from washers and dryers, we could see a shared system for the front and UI, and we could see a shared system for control and communication but perhaps this control and communication system could span even wider onto other home appliance products. This could be hardware and software for IoT, uh, controlling of the operation of the, of the appliance, etc. While we have to keep the base of the product, the actual washer functional parts and the dryer functional parts separate since they have very different requirements on the rest of the products. About flexible assembly lines. This is an example from a real client case. The client had three separate product platforms and each platform was modular. But due to different design principles and no reuse of parts between these platforms, each platform needed a dedicated assembly line. And what happened was that due to fluctuations and hard to predict demands, very often one of these lines was overloaded. And this led to longer lead times and lower quality when they had to add a third shift. At the same time, the other two lines were running well below capacity. At this client, a cross-platform modular product architecture was implemented. Harmonization of structural design principles and vastly increased, increased reuse of parts enabled the use of flexible lines that could produce all product variants, rather than dedicated lines for each and every platform. Now this solution completely eliminated the leveling challenge between the lines and it vastly improved the utilization of the lines. Effects that were so big that the practical effect was that the three dedicated lines could be rebuilt into two flexible lines covering the same capacity. So in this presentation, I have defined product architecture as a system of modular systems. To me, this is one of the most important realizations a company must have to enable maximum efficiency for modularization. Benefits that can be seen in all aspects, both internal and for customer benefits. Thank you for listening.